SCP-003 Object Class, Euclid Special Containment Procedures, SCP-003 is to be kept at a constant temperature of at least 35 degrees Celsius, preferably above 100 degrees Celsius. It is forbidden to contact the object with any living multicellular organism, the complexity category of which is 4 or higher. If SCP-003-1 begins to gain mass as a result of a complete power outage, assigned personnel are to establish and maintain bodily contact with SCP-003-1. Ideally, personnel can heat SCP-003-1 with their own body heat to above a critical temperature. However contact is to be maintained even if SCP-003 reaches its activation temperature and not broken until at least full transition of SCP-003-1 to the second stage of growth. Personnel entering SCP-003's containment chamber are to be screened for complexity 4 or higher bodily parasites and, if found, decontaminated. All personnel who have come into physical contact with SCP-003-1 are to report it immediately and be decontaminated. It is forbidden to remove SCP-003-1 from SCP-003-2 except under the emergency procedures described above. Any significant changes in the activity of SCP-003-2 runes, including changes in the sequence, frequency, and color of their glow, are to be reported no later than three hours after occurrence. Cases of rune cessation should be reported immediately. SCP-003-2 is to be continuously powered by a power source designated Generator-003-9. Description, SCP-003 consists of two interconnected objects of different origins, hereafter referred to as SCP-003-1 and SCP-003-2. SCP-003-1 consists of chitin, hair, and nails of unknown species, held together in a structure similar to a computer motherboard. Research has shown that SCP-003-1 predates the earliest printed circuit boards by thousands of years. The object is considered to be sentient but, except under certain conditions, is not dangerous. SCP-003-1 was found on a stone slab, SCP-003-2, where it currently resides. The runes on the slab are not part of any known language and flicker with a pale light in a certain sequence. SCP-003-2 is controlled by an internal, non-biological, computer, which cannot be researched without risking damage to SCP-003-2. SCP-003-2 is capable of producing controlled bursts of radiation, including bursts of heat, light, and anomalous radiation. SCP-003-2 contains an internal power source of an anomalous nature that appears to have begun to deplete centuries prior to its discovery. It is considered likely that SCP-003-2 was created for the purpose of containing SCP-003-1. Partially translated data obtained from SCP-003-2 may indicate an LK-class restructuring event caused by SCP-003-1 that occurred in the past or may occur in the future. SCP-003 was discovered via remote surveillance by the SRV-04 beta team. It is possible that SCP-003-2 deliberately contacted SRV-04 beta. Other organizations have also been alerted to SCP-003's existence, presumably in the same way. Despite this display of activity, SCP-003-2 does not appear to be sentient. Based on its lack of response to M03, Gloria's research and procedures. When the temperature drops below 35 degrees Celsius, both parts of the object are activated. SCP-003-1 will first enter a state of growth, resulting in an exponential increase in mass. This state is divided into two stages. In both stages, SCP-003-1 partially supports the growth process by transforming the surrounding matter, starting with inorganic materials, including elements of the atmosphere, and then moving to non-living organic matter, dead skin, hair, chitin, enamel, keratin, and other organic materials. The first stage always proceeds in the same way. 
SCP-003-1 first increases in mass, then assumes a shape similar to an Ophiura snake tail, 15 meters in diameter, what would appear to be a central processing unit would then be 3 meters in diameter. Sense organs are formed and begin to explore the environment, and the space around the object is partially transformed into an unknown anomalous substance, SCP-003-2 itself is not subject to such a transformation. The second stage refers to the change in growth that occurs when SCP-003-1 comes into contact with living organic matter, during which a change in growth dynamics occurs, in this case, SCP-003 appears to be attempting to mold itself into the image of available organic material and to make contact with organisms consistent with its original pattern or patterns. In the second stage, SCP-003-1 can halt, slow, or reverse its growth, as well as begin to transform inorganic or non-living organic matter into structures similar to itself, changing their physical composition through anomalous influence. During the first stage, growth continues at a constant rate, while during the second stage, it slows down by 20 to 90 percent for as long as SCP-003-1 remains in contact with living organic matter. The percentage depends on the complexity of the organism or organisms associated with the object. It appears that SCP-003-1 devotes a large amount of computational resources to the analysis of living organic material. During each of SCP-003-1's growth stages, SCP-003-2 emits bursts of radiation that will temporarily inhibit SCP-003-1's growth, and if the temperature rises above 100 degrees Celsius, may even reverse it. Similar emissions of radiation could be reproduced and recorded using other anomalous means. The biology of SCP-003-1 has been the subject of extensive scientific research. Major elements of SCP-1512 and SCP-2756 have been found to be similar to SCP. The latter two have not been confirmed to be connected to each other or between them and SCP-003-1 and neither of them has been fully explored, strictly speaking, they have been studied even less than SCP-003. Because the latter was investigated by conducting numerous cross-sectional experiments. To date, no convincing hypothesis has been put forward to explain the connection between SCP-003-1 and these objects, or any others. Nor any hypothesis to explain the connection between them and modern technology, Apart from hypotheses regarding the similarity of them appearance, for example, it has been suggested that mimicry is possible using an unknown mechanism. Addendum 003-01, based on information gathered from linguistic analysis of SCP-003-2 runes and comparative data analysis, the M03 Gloria research team was able to establish a link between SCP-003 and data expunged for function analysis. Based on this, SCP-003-1 is to be considered animate and kept at least one kilometer away from, data expunged, and the resulting product. Addendum 003-02, SCP-0032's power loss is exacerbated as a result of M03 Gloria's procedures. By order of 05-10M03 Gloria is to continue applying procedures. Addendum 003-03, during M03 Gloria procedures, SCP-003-1 doubled its mass and began rapid structural growth. The temperature was immediately raised to 100 degrees Celsius. The growth and mass increase of SCP-003-1 continued for 9 minutes and 6 seconds. With SCP-003-2 producing a continuous burst of radiation, as a result, SCP-003-1 returned to its original state in 3 minutes, 39 seconds. The regrown parts of SCP-003-1 crumbled into dust, which was collected for further analysis. Following this, SCP-003-1 and SCP-003-2 ceased all visible activity. SCP-003-2 did not resume activity until it was connected to an external power source. 
The rims of SCP-003-2 glowed in a uniform gray color and did not show the usual activity for three hours. SCP-003-2 appears to be no longer able to maintain temperatures above 35 degrees Celsius without an external power supply. Connected external power supplies are designated as generators 00339. Addendum 003-04 the procedure described in Addendum 003-03 was repeated, and SCP-003-1 re-entered its growth state. After 10 minutes and 13 seconds, SCP-003-2 emitted a burst of radiation. The growth of the object stopped for 36 seconds, and then resumed at the initial speed. Thank you. 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 Thank you.